We can talk later about the book. I did not mean to talk that much, Ted. I ain't give you a chance to say anything. <laughs> But man, hey. you hey, you open the door, you open the door, brother. I'm coming through. Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Hey, today our guest is Calvin Stovall. He is the executive director of the Advanced Leadership Institute. He's the chief experience officer for B Iconic Presentations. And if, if that wasn't enough, he's also a what uh host of the be iconic mindset he is also a hospitality historian man i'm I'm tired just talking about all the things that you're doing how are you (laughs) (laughs) how you doing man (laughs) i'm doing fantastic ted man thank you so much for having me on really excited to get an opportunity to talk to you Man, I have been watching you and reading all the little things that you put out on LinkedIn and, and your post. And I love everything you put out. It's always just so, uh, what, what is it, uplifting or it's educational or it's pushing people to be better. So kudos to you for that because you and I have never met before only through LinkedIn. And I think we kind of went back and forth a little bit. And I said, man, this dude, I really like what this dude is putting out there and it's always encouraging. So I appreciate all the stuff that you put out and keep doing that, man. Thank you, Ted. I appreciate that. Appreciate the compliment. I mean, I've been watching you too. I mean, you've been, I don't (laughs) know, you've been busy. You've talked to so many people. I like, (laughs) I was like, man, I can't, I can't wait to get on his show to talk to him too. So, um, you know, your, your, your podcast are always really entertaining as well. So thank you for, for carving out some time for me to chat with you. I'm really, I'm really excited about it. Man, that's awesome. All right. Usually when we have a new guest on, I always like to get a little bit of a feel for them, their background, where they're from, kind of where they grew up. Give our audience a little bit of background on you. Wow. Um, well, I I am. Well, I live in North Carolina now. Um, I live in Mooresville, North Carolina, um, which is about 30 minutes north of Charlotte. But um, I'm originally from Chicago. So I'm from the shy. Born and raised, um, and um, grew up on the north and south side of Chicago. I actually was in, in, uh, born in Cabrini Green Housing Projects on the north side of Chicago, but also lived on the south side, right off 79th and Drexel. So, um, yeah, I, I, good old Harold's Chicken fan. So, uh, <laughs> you know, still love my Chicago Bears and my Bulls. Um, so, um, but uh, I, I have a hospitality background primarily. Um, I'm to- totally, totally love it. Love the industry and um, started as a front desk clerk at a Holiday Inn in downtown Chicago and um, worked in some some other hotels, the Executive House, the Barclay, some of the other ones down there. And then eventually ended up going to graduate school. Um, well, I went to undergrad at Chicago State University and also on right off 95th and King and um, then went to graduate school at the Cornell at Cornell, the hotel school. Um, so did a couple of years there and then ended up working for Hilton. Um, so I moved to Memphis, Tennessee. So the city boy went south. Um, so was at, yeah, Hilton has a corporate office. <laughs> yeah. Hilton has a corporate office in Memphis. And so um, I actually was the assistant general manager at an embassy suites for a couple of years. Um, and so got some property level experience there and end up transitioning into corporate. Uh, went into brand research, became the vice president of brand marketing for Homewood Suites by Hilton and um, did that with Homewood. I mean, I started with them when they only had about 35, 40 hotels, man. So a fantastic, small but mighty team, great leadership. <laughs> it, and yeah, man, we it was it was a wonderful time for me in hospitality. I learned so much. Yeah. Um, you know how it is when you have a small team, you got to do a lot of stuff and you yeah. learn a lot. Um, yeah. And had a great um, team leader in, in Holthauser there, and then ended up. Um, I left Hilton and lived in Minneapolis for a few years. When I started my company, um, Iconic Pre- so it wasn't Iconic Presentations then, but it was still professional speaking. And did that to about two thousand nine or so, um, and <laughs> and you know the economy went a little crazy, and then I ended up coming back to Memphis again for Hilton. I went back to work for them again and um, 
and did that a couple of years. Also worked, then went did some nonprofit work as well. Worked for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Alsac for a couple of years for their brand, you know, fundraising arm. And this part you're going to love. I, I'm, I'm sure you will, Ted. I actually um, also became the CEO of the Soulsville Foundation in Memphis, which, yeah, which is the, um, you may remember Snack, Stacks Records. Um, it's their former studio. It's now the Stacks Museum of American Soul Music. Um, there are, you know, Isaac Hayes and Staple Singers, the Dramatics. Yeah, Johnny Taylor, all of, yep, all recorded on that label. Otis Wedding. Um, so, but there's a museum now, and but they also have a, a charter school on campus and also an after school music program. So for, for youth, teach them how to play soul music. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's incredible. Um, um, it's still there. There was actually a documentary just on, um, on I think it was on HBO or something about Stax Records, which told the entire story. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, it was just on not even a month ago. Um, wow. Great. It's like a four part, yeah, it was a four part, um, documentary. It was fantastic. So yeah, so you know, now running my own company, Iconic Presentations, which you mentioned. So I specialize in doing keynotes on customer experience, customer service, leadership. Um, and I speak for mostly hotel companies, but also um, I speak for um, um, hospitals, medical organizations on patient experience, also real estate management companies. And as you mentioned, I am the, the director of executive programs with the Advanced Leadership Institute, and we prepare African-Americans for C-suite positions. We do it in partnership with Carnegie Mellon University in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania um, at their Tipper School of Business. Um, so we're actually right now recruiting for our second national um, cohort. Um, um, there, um, but um, we're actually next, we, I think mid-July, July 19th to be exact, we're graduating our sixth National Executive Leadership Academy. Um, yeah, so we're excited, um, excited. I love what I'm doing there. And then we can talk later about the book. I did not mean to talk that much, Ted. I didn't give you a chance to say anything. <laughs> But man, hey. you hey, you opened the door. You opened the door, brother. I'm coming through. <laughs> right in a minute. All right. <laughs> well, hey. you know, they're like, man, but yeah, man, I, I'm I'm truly blessed. I've worked with some fantastic people, man, and learned so much. Still learning a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, man, it's been it's been a great ride. I've been very blessed. Wow. Well, you you touched on a couple things during that that intro that were interesting to me. One, I've never been a huge, well, I shouldn't say that. I really love the Chicago Bears. And I am I am a big uh, Singletary fan. So, so I, I would, you know, Singletary and Walter Payton were my guys. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I, I just, like I said, I just love service. I loved, you know, being able to, um, you say pay it forward. A lot of people helped me. A lot of people helped me, Ted, along the way. So I'm, I'm just anything that I can do to contribute. I want to do that. Um, and that's part of why I wrote the book as well. Um, so it's it's um, man, that's just it. It's been fun. Some, de some days I wake up glad I don't have any hair. I want to pull my hair out. But I'm, I don't have any, so <laughs> I don't have to do that part, <laughs> right? Some days are like that, you know, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's all worth it, brother, you know? And so it's called the Advanced um, Leadership Institute. Um, and actually, um, the CEO, his name is Evan Frazier. Um, actually, we go back a long time. Um, I met Evan at Cornell when I was in graduate school. He was an undergraduate. And um, so he has been doing this for a while. I think he, I think he wrote a paper in like 2016 um, or so. And um, he's a, he's a Pittsburgh native. And um, so one of the challenges there, you know, they I think he said it was like when they did a study um, of all the um, executives in the city, it was like less than 0.1 percent, not one percent of, of African Americans in C-suite roles. So that was kind of his catalyst for wanting to put this um, organization together. And he's 
he's done a great job at it. Um, he, we have um, many uh, um, corporate sponsors as well um, that supported the initiative. And like I said, this is the sixth cohort that will be graduating next week. So we have three different programs. There's the executive, the, the executive leadership academy, which is more regional. Then there's a national executive leadership academy, which is the one that we're recruiting for now. And then there's also an emerging leaders program, which is for recruiting managers. So we've had three emerging leader cohorts. This is we're graduating our sixth executive leadership academy, and we're recruiting now for our second. Um, 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 national. And so when, when we graduate this cohort, I think we'll have a little bit more than 220 or so alumni, all senior black executives um, that has gone through the program. Um, and so, um, yeah, we have a great curriculum. We also, they all get executive coaches, um, depending on the program you're in, particularly the Leadership Academy and the um, national program, get an executive coach, mentor, um, access to the alumni and just a, just a fabulous, um, um, education experience. You know, we, you know, as African-Americans, we have a different experience in senior when we're in senior roles. So, you know, we have the, the normal stuff you would learn like strategy and things like that, but we do have courses and, and professors that come in that talk particularly to the executive experience for African-Americans. Um, and you know, some of the things and how to, um, you know, better thrive in that. Yeah, better thrive in corporate America. And that's just, that's just real. And a lot of, a lot of programs don't, don't have that or don't want to discuss those things, but, but we put that stuff head on. Um, and it's just a, a, a great experience. Most, most, if you ask most of the people that have gone through it, um, and you ask them if you could say one word about our program, they would say it was transformative. And so, yes, yeah, super proud of what my role there and, um, we have a great team and a great leader in, in, in Evan, a great visionary, man. He's he's doing great stuff. So now we're trying to do partnerships with large organizations because we're going national now. Um, so so we get the word out other than because they're well known. Tally, that's what we call it for short, is very well known in Pittsburgh. If you go, you walk around, you say, you know about that Bass Leadership Institute? There's going to be somebody that said, yep, yeah, yeah. But we need to spread the word about that. And so that's what we're working on now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is an amazing story, Calvin. Hey, tell me a little bit about this hospitality historian book you're talking about doing. It sounds like it's a wonderful novel. Talk about it a little bit. Oh, wow, man. This, this, you know what, Ted? This is one of my favorite subjects, sir. Um, actually, I am um, actually going through my developmental edits, edits right now. Um, so. <laughs> Um, it's a book called Hospitality Historiography, and it is actually a historical depiction of um, African-American hotel, motel and resort ownership, um, starting back into like the mid 1700s, all the way through Jim Crow era, civil rights. And then there's a last chapter um, that's called Keepers of the Flame, which kind of talks about African-American hotel owners today like Sheila Johnson and some of the other ones. Um, that have making an impact in the industry. So it, it's, it's, um, it's, it's due out the end of hopefully by the end of this year or probably by black next black history month at the latest of, of 2025. But yeah, I've been, I've been, um, it's, it's, it's been a wonderful project. I've, I've learned a lot and I'm just hoping that, um, when it's done, um, people will be excited and be inspired by it. It's going to be a coffee table book. So it's a little bit different. It'll be oversized um, quite a bit. Okay. And so it'll have photographs in it as well. Yeah. So so does it touch on, and I'm sure you're familiar with it, and I learned about this maybe a year or two ago, about the Green Book. Does it touch on those types of stories where, you know, we were limited on options that we had when we were trying to travel? To talk, talk about it. Is it, it kind of touch on that as well? Yes, it touches on that. Um, but, you know, and that the Green Book, and I, I'm so excited that actually that movie came out several years ago um, because a lot of people didn't even know it existed. Um, so, you know, uh, it, it brought attention to a, a you know, a, a, a travel challenge that we were having as blacks, man. I mean, we, we, we couldn't, I mean, there were sundown towns. I mean, there were places yeah. we didn't know if we could stay in. And so that Green Book was kind of our 
printed GPS uh, to yeah. keep us safe, you know? And so, uh, yeah, but, but that, of course, that's in there. You can't, I can't write this book without that piece being in there. Hugo, Hugo Victor Green, who actually started the Green Book and his wife, Alma, um, and it's, it's definitely in the book, but it is, it is just a portion. There were, I right. have hotels in there probably 200 years before that even occurred. Wow. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm talking like 17, 30, 50, you know, all the way through. So it's, um, it's a whole section in that book that people, I'm going to tell you, Ted, probably 95% <laughs> of people in this book, people never heard of before. All black wow. hotel owners. Because because we couldn't stay in white hotels, and so we had to we had to build our own. And so there were, and in a lot of these cases, they were millionaires. Um, I mean, like Joseph Lee, who you probably haven't never heard of him. Annie Box probably haven't heard of him. I mean, her. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Madam Sarah Spencer Washington. I mean, so I have I have so much, and it actually started as a. Um, graduate school. I went to, I think I told you earlier, I went to graduate school at Cornell and um, I was involved with the National Society of Minority Hoteliers, which was started at the school. Um, and Evan Frazier, who we're, who we're still friends, I work with him now. He was actually one of the founders of that organization. And he asked me, okay. they were having their third conference. He was like, I was a graduate student at the time. And he's like, Calvin, could you do some history, uh, some research on black hotel ownership? And I was like, wow, that's pretty interesting. He said, we want to try to see if we can do something for the conference. And so I got into it, man. Ted, I was looking at stuff, old stuff, man, on microfiche. <laughs> and I know if you got some young listeners, they probably have no idea what that is. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> but yeah, I was looking at you know, old periodicals. And what I got so intrigued by the information, Ted, I, it actually became my graduate monograph. So okay. I... Um, um, it was my monograph and, you know, I graduated and they, and they give you a nice bound copy of it. You know, when you graduate in a beautiful black binder with gold lettering on it and it sat for years, like decades. And um, I was cleaning out some boxes one day and I found it. And a friend of mine was happened to be in my home and she was like, what what is that you got? I said, well, this is my monograph. <laughs> Um, that I wrote in graduate school. And she was like, well, what is it about? I'm like, well, it's about black hotel ownership starting like in the 1700s and all the way there. She was like, we did, we owned hotels? And so she grabbed it and she started reading it, man. And she, you could see her eyes was just like, right. she was like, is this a book? And that wow. was pretty much how it started, man. And that, and Ted, you know what? That's why this book, I think it's going to be so inspiring for people because I would say, 70% of these folks in here were former slaves or children of former slaves. And they built beautiful hotels, man. And, and, and so it's almost like you think about it, if our ancestors can, can create something like that in such challenging times, we should be able to do the same thing today. We have a lot more at our, you know, uh, um, as, you know, uh, and we can get more things and more resources and so forth than they could get. And so, yeah, it's it's actually um, a phenomenon that they were able to still be successful in that time. Now, most of the properties, as you probably know, are gone now um, because what happened was um, in the, the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which I think we just had the 60th year anniversary of like yesterday or the day before, I think it was. Um, um, and um, and it, 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 what ended up happening is with, when that act went into effect, it, blacks were able to stay wherever they wanted to. And so I always say, and I truly, truly, I please don't take, I don't want anybody listening to take this the wrong way, but what ended up happening is it's a blessing and a curse because yes, we were able to stay wherever we wanted to, but at the same time that left the black hotels because they depended on our patronage. And so when that went away, that was it. So a lot of them went under, couldn't survive. And so um, probably 90, 98% of those properties aren't, aren't in existence. There are a few, there are a few that's still out there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the only sad part of that, that's that entire story. But I'm glad to, I'm, I'm, I get the blessing to resurface it and share this with the world because I just think it's important for people to know.
Yeah. yeah. Man, I, I, I'm excited to know that that's coming out. So first, first question is, how do I get my autographed copy? <laughs> all right you Sec- man i got you i got you sir i got you <laughs> all right. second question is where will our viewers be able to buy it and get it i don't know amazon whatever way you can can access yeah. it but if there's a is it, if you know that information and how they can get it that'd be wonderful to mm-hmm. share with the world now so we can try to say hey let's be on the lookout for this you know yeah yeah, it'll it'll be everywhere. Um, I'm as I, Brown Books is my publisher, and they actually, but it'll be in bookstores and it'll be online. It'll be everywhere because um, I'm really planning, and well, I'm hoping anyway, to do a really big launch, um, probably starting sometime in October, November. Um, so you'll you know you'll you'll see it, and if you want to follow me on um, you know iconicpresentations.net or Calvin at iconicpresentations.net, or you can find me on LinkedIn. You want to get a copy? I got you. I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely do that. I'm gonna definitely keep an eye out, and and uh, hopefully, when you let us know that it's about to hit the streets, you know, we'll we'll put up another uh, blast on our uh, our page so that folks know that that book is available and they can go and uh, and find it. Just just another way to keep the word out, you know. Oh, thank you, Ted. I appreciate that, man. I really do. You know, and if, hey, if you want, I could, I'll come back, talk about it. Then I'll have a product in hand. I'll do a whole show hey. for you. On the pages. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that, a whole that, demonstration. <laughs> man, that, that's even better, man. I, I tell yeah, you what, Kevin, yeah. I, I, I really, really, really appreciate you giving us a few minutes of your time. It's been a blast, uh, you know, and uh, I look forward to to following you and reading more LinkedIn because I felt like I knew you before you even came on because I was reading all the stuff you were putting out on LinkedIn. Oh, that's right? cool. Thank so, you. Thank you, you for know. your support, man. <laughs> and if folks want to want to connect with you, I know you just gave us one shout out, uh, but how do they find out more about the ALI Institute? Let's give them a shout out. And okay. then, you know, of course, be iconic and, and uh, about your book, Gates. So, <laughs> So let our folks know how they can find out more information about the okay. ALI Institute. Mm-hmm. All right. The, the, the Advanced Leadership Institute, um, we have a website. Um, if you go to tallyinstitute.org, you can, you'll, you'll get to our website. And we are, um, of course, we're now recruiting um, candidates for our second national Um, Executive Leadership Academy. We did extend the application deadline to July 15th, so you still have some time to go there. Again, phenomenal program. Um, Please feel free to give me uh, my my email is calvin at tallyinstitute.org. That's calvin at tallyinstitute.org. If you have any specific questions about any of the programs that we offer as well. And um, again, you can find me on my website, uh, my website is Calvin at Iconic Pre- not Calvin, IconicPresentations.net, or you can just put in Calvin Stovall Iconic. It'll come up. Um, and my email there is Calvin at IconicPresentations.net. So I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on IG. I'm on X. You can find me in those places as well. <laughs> and think the book will be out I'll- early next year, late this year. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Yes. I, like, like I said, I'm going through my uh, edits from my developmental editor first round. That's 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 a rough one. You know, when you get all the remarks back and stuff, you might have to change and shift. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to get that back to them for a second round. And then it goes. It has to go through two more rounds of uh, copy editing and then design and so forth. So, yeah, based on the timeline. We're looking at probably it would be great if I could have it by Christmas. That would be the best Christmas gift ever. So but, you know, that's being optimistic. But but at least by, um, like I said, Black History Month would be probably more probable. Oh, man, that that would be awesome as well. So that's a perfect time mm-hmm. to have you come back on and talk about it as well. Yep. So we'll look out for that. All right. Okay. Awesome. All right. Yeah. All right. Hey, this has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Please take a minute to check out the Recover It app today and get your 50% off coupon, uh, protecting your family and all your heirlooms and your valuables is so important. 
And as always, we ask that you follow us here on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel. This episode with Calvin will also be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And as always, 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 we appreciate your thoughts and feedback. This is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. We will see you guys next time. Take care. Ted's Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.